हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मिसेज सुरभि गुप्ता असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंटरनेशनल अफेयर्स एंड सिक्योरिटी स्टडीज सरदार पटेल पुलिस यूनिवर्सिटी जोधपुर एंड आई विल बी गिविंग मॉड्यूल ऑन डेफिनेशन ऑफ टेररिज्म माई लर्निंग आउटकम्स वुड बी टू इन्फॉर्म द लर्नर्स अबाउट द ओरिजिन ऑफ द वर्ड टेररिज्म एंड टू मेक दम अंडरस्टैंड द नीड फॉर डिफाइनिंग टेररिज्म एंड टू अंडरस्टैंड द प्रॉब्लम्स इन डिफाइनिंग टेररिज्म ऑल्सो I would try to acquaint the learners with the various definitions of terrorism, and to make them understand about the meaning and the key elements involved in terrorism. To begin with, I would first deal with the origin of the word terrorism. The word terrorism it dates back to the French Revolution of 1789, and the first recorded use of terrorism was in 1793 to describe the reign of terror during the French Revolution. when the ruling establishment jacobins they employed the violence including mass executions in order to terrorize the enemies of the state and to compel them to obedience they were hailed as revolutionaries and this form of terrorism which was carried out during that time was by the french state thus the origin of uh, terrorism we can find, uh, see it goes back to several hundred years to french revolution and now it appears to be a permanent part of modern society but the characterization of terrorism as a state action faded while the idea of terrorism as an attack against an existing political order became more prominent so we can see that the use of terrorism in an anti government sense is not recorded until 1866 referring to the ireland or the irish revolution and 1833 referring to russia in post cold war era when enemy nation could not gain parity and synergy in balance of power equation and go waxed in disadvantageous position vis-a-vis the enemy nation they resorted to the u uh, to terror tool as other means to achieve the objectives the trend of terror tactics of rogue nations was soon followed by non-state actors and terrorist groups and many more fanatic outfits so terrorism has gone from a persistent yet marginal security concern to one of the most important security problems of our day Indeed there are few countries that do not suffer from some photo, uh, form of terrorism. Terrorism continues to pose a major threat to international peace and security and undermine the core values of the United Nations. In addition to the devastating human cost of terrorism in terms of life lost or permanently altered, terrorist act aim to destabilize government and undermine economic and social development. addressing this threat is therefore that much more difficult given the complex and constantly evolving nature of terrorist activities like its motivations financing methods of attack and choice of target are constantly changing terrorist acts often defy national borders one of uh, act of terrorism can involve activities and actors from numerous countries the problem of terrorism therefore has to be rationally viewed in fair uh despite definitions perspectives and implications now what are the problems which we encounter in defining terrorism the adversarial and the political postures embedded in the practice of terrorism make it unlikely that a universally accepted definition or a widely shared strategy for controlling it will soon emerge terrorism is an ideological and political concept politics by nature is adversarial and thus any definition of terrorism it evokes adversarial disagreement the meaning given to terrorism is part of a person's or nation's philosophy thus the determination of the right definition of terrorism is subjective and not likely to be reached by consensus therefore if you disagree with my position you are a terrorist and if you agree with my position you are not a terrorist yet the cliche that one man terrorist and is another man's freedom fighter provides little help in def- uh, definitional precision Besides that media coverage of every terrorist incident over the years has further complicated the difficulty of defining terrorism because there is no distinction drawn in the media between pure act of terrorist and terrorism as a phenomena we find that more than 100 definition of terrorism exist which is offered by government officials scholars media and terrorists themselves the definition of terrorism uh, the problem faced in definition of terrorism is not new copper has noted that there has never been a golden age in which terrorism was easy to define now what is the importance of defining terrorism and why so much stress is laid on giving definition of terrorism because aside from the social context the terrorism is pejorative it's loaded with political exclusive meanings and therefore the manner in which we define terrorism has political consequences 
Why? Because only the nation states have the freedom to apply the label to their enemies and this in turn will dehumanize the person who received the label. When people are deemed to be terrorists, governments give their security forces expanded powers of investigation, search and detention. In many cases, they utilize military forces to kill opponents without thought of capture or benefit of trial. For example, we can see United States has employed missile attacks from drones that has not only killed terrorists but also innocent civilians in the surrounding areas. Therefore, terrorists are treated differently from criminals and other enemies of the state. They are a typical criminal entitled to neither human rights nor civil liberty. This is especially true when terrorists operate from foreign bases. Representatives of the state may take action outside the law because people supporting the state frequently believe that terrorists are somehow less than human. The state also has the power to look at all of its citizens and people from all parts of the world as potential terrorists. Therefore, governments can expand social control and limit civil liberties in response to terrorism. This underlines the importance of defining terrorism. Now we come to the various definitions which have been offered by various scholars, government agencies. And we find that there is no single definition of terrorism and a number of uh, definitions have been offered by, uh, of terrorism. It has become a global problem and it becomes one of the most serious issues plaguing the world after the attacks, especially on the Twin Towers in New York on September 11, 2001. Various governments have had various approaches to terrorism and there have been mixed results that varied from country to country. Counter-terrorist strategies used by the governments all over the world also show that there is no uniform formula to defeat terrorism but that, that it needs to be tailor-made for each and every nation specifically. The problem of terrorism itself starts with this fact that there is not a single accepted definition of terrorism. This means that terrorism is a very abstract, ambiguous and subjective concept. We can see that example during the so Afghan Mujahideen attack against the Soviet Union, USA praised the Taliban and called them freedom fighters, while the same Soviet Union denounced them as terrorists. But when Al-Qaeda attacked the Twin Towers in 2001, they were called terrorists and were declared to be the enemy in the war on terrorism. To show how definitions may vary, we investigate a few official ones, starting with that of the US Department of State, for which terrorism means pre-mediated, politically motivated violence perpetrated against non-combatant targets by sub-national groups or clandestine agents usually intended to influence an audience. An interesting feature of this definition is the characterization of the victim as non-combatants. That is, it means only civilians and unarmed or off-duty military personnel are included. Accordingly, a bomb planted under a US soldier's private vehicle in Germany is an act of terrorism. This nicely illustrates how definition of a victim can be quite controversial. The state's department of US itself definition is silent about whether a threat is a terrorist act. It defines terrorism as the unlawful use or threatened use of force or violence against individuals or property to coerce or intimidate governments or societies often to achieve political, religious or ideological objectives. Three contrasts between the Department of Defense and State Department's definition are worth highlighting. First is that now the threat of violence is included in, def uh, de uh, in the definition of Department of State. Second, the non-combatant distinction is dropped so that the roadside bombing of a US convoy in Iraq would be terrorism. Third, religious and ideological motives are explicitly identified. Even two departments of the same government cannot fully agree on the definition. Nevertheless, these definitions identify the same five minimal ingredients. Violence, political motivation, perpetrator, victim and audience. The definition problem lies in precisely identifying these ingredients. Slightly different definitions of terrorism also characterize those of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Defense Intelligence Agency and the Vice President Task Force on Terrorism of 1986. According to Federal Bureau of Investigation, terrorism is the unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population or any segment thereof in furtherance of political and social objectives. Thus, in United States, three of the main agencies have placed different emphasis on the phenomena of terrorism as indicated above. We find the difference in the definition of Department of Defense, in State Department and in Federal Bureau of Investigation. The political nature of defining terrorism also comes into focus when the official UN definition is examined. 
which states that terrorism is the act of destroying or injuring civilian lives or the act of destroying or damaging civilian or government property without expressly chartered permission of a specific government. This by individuals or groups acting independently in the attempt to effect some political goal. A difficulty with this definition is that it may not brand a state-sponsored skyjacking or bombing as an act of terrorism if it is uh, sponsored by a specific government. Since 9-11, the United Nations has ignored this official definition and taken a more pragmatic approach, branding violence act perpetrated by subnational groups for political purposes as terrorism. Thus, we find that terrorism is a contested concept. While there are many national and regional definitions, there is no universal legal definition approved by the General Assembly of the United Nations. The one proposed by the Security Council is non-binding, lacking legal authority in international law. Here only we can find, in context of UN only, the ad hoc committee on terrorism of the 6th committee of the General Assembly has, with some interruptions, been trying to reach a legal definition since 1972, but in vain. In the absence of a legal definition, attempts have been made to reach agreement on an academic consensus definition. So we can find now a number of definitions given by academic scholars. For example, according to Brian Jenkins, Terrorism is the use or threatened use of force designed to bring about political change. Another scholar, Walter Lacquer, defines terrorism as Terrorism constitutes the illegitimate use of force to achieve a political objective when innocent people are targeted. According to James Poland, terrorism is the premeditated, deliberate, systematic murder, mayhem, and threatening of the innocent to create fear and intimidation in order to gain a political or tactical advantage, usually to influence an audience. US Vice President's Task Force 1986 gave the following definition. Terrorism is the unlawful use or threat of violence against persons or property to further political or social objectives. It is usually intended to intimidate or coerce a government, individuals or groups or to modify their behavior or politics. Another scholar, Dr. Yan Alexander, has defined the use or threat of violence against random or civilian targets in order to intimidate or create generalized pervasive fear for the purpose of achieving political goals. Hoffman defines terrorism as deliberate creation and exploitation of fear through violence or the threat of violence in the pursuit of political change. Iqbal Ahmed, an outspoken and highly acclaimed Indian anti-colonialist, scholar noted that terrorism of yesterday is the hero of today and the hero of yesterday becomes the terrorist of today. This is a serious matter of the constantly changing world of images in which we have to keep our heads straight to know what terrorism is and what it is not. Ahmed identified five types of terrorism, state terrorism, religious terrorism, criminal terrorism, political terrorism and oppositional terrorism, all of which fit his simple definition of terrorism as the use of terrorizing methods of governing or resisting a government. Jessica Stern argues that terrorism can be distinguished from other forms of violence by only two characteristics. It is aimed at non-combatants and secondly, it is intended to instill fear in the target audience. Thus, Stern defines terrorism as an act or threat of violence against non-combatants with the objective of exacting revenge, intimidating, or otherwise influencing an audience. Walter Lecker has written extensively, he's a very famous scholar, he has written extensively on the problem of definition. He argues that comprehensive definition does not now and may never exist. Nevertheless, he defines it as the use of covert violence by a group for political ends. United Nations Security Council Resolution Number 1373 had defined terrorism as criminal act intended or calculated to provoke a state of terror in the general public, a group of persons or particular persons for political purposes are in circumstances unjustifiable whether the consideration of a political, philosophical, ideological, racial, ethnic, religious or other nature that may be invoked to justify them. Looking at all the above definitions, we can find or we can summarize the conventional definition of terrorism as premeditated politically motivated violence perpetrated against non-combatant targets by sub-national groups or clandestine agents usually intended to influence an audience. All terrorist acts are crimes many 
would also be violations of the rule of war if a state of war existed. All involved violence or the threat of violence often completed with specific demands. The targets are mainly civilians, the motives are political, the actions are generally designed to achieve maximum publicity, the perpetrators are usually members of an organized group and unlike other criminals, they often claim credit for the act. This is true hallmark of terrorism. And finally, it is intrinsic to note that terrorist act is usually intended to produce psychological effects far beyond the immediate physical damage. This definition has been found to be inadequate to cover new mutations of terrorism such as what is referred to as cyber terrorism. Acts of cyber terrorism do not target human beings. They target capabilities such as the critical information infrastructure, even though one of the end results of such targeting could be human casualties too, in addition to destroying or damaging capabilities. Now, uh, we come to some of the major terrorist tactics or the operations which terrorists use. For example, hostage missions, skyjacking, kidnapping and barricade on hostage taking or bombing assassinations, threats, and hoaxes, suicide attacks, armed attacks, sabotage, nuclear-related weapon attack, chemical or biological attacks. Other actions can be bank robberies, propaganda, legitimate efforts to gain political recognition. Now, what are the main elements of terrorism which we can find in all these definitions of terrorism? Nevertheless, most legal and working definitions, whether of international and domestic terrorism, are constructed of four or five elements. First is the victim. The victims of terrorism are usually specified as civilians or non-combatants in order to differentiate terrorism from attacks on military targets which are outright acts of war. Second is targets. Who are the targets of terrorists? This is a very important element. The persons who are the victims of terrorism are merely its direct targets. Most acts of terrorism have secondary or ultimate targets, usually the leaders of one or more governments. The victims are used by the terrorist to convey a coercive message to the targets. Third element is intent. What is the intent of terrorist? The intent of terrorism is either to intimidate or coerce a civilian population that is to spread fear widely for its own sake or to coercely influence or manipulate the conduct or policy of one or more governments that is which are the ultimate targets through the intimidation of civilians or non-combatants. Now last element the means. Terrorism involves violence or the threat of violence against persons or property. Some definitions enumerate specific, uh, specific acts such as assassination, hostage taking, bombing, sabotage, cyber terrorism, bioterrorism and hijacking or other violent acts against civil aircraft or other modes of public transportation. The motivation. While motivation is not usually a formal element of a crime, some definitions specify that its acts are politically motivated. The term politically is used in these contexts as an umbrella for a range of justifications, including biology, ideological, religious and nationalistic ones. Now we go to the revised academic consensus on definition of terrorism compiled by Alex Smith. First, terrorism refers on the one hand to a doctrine about the presumed effectiveness of a special form or tactic of fear generating, coercive political violence and on the other hand to a conspiratorial practice of calculated, demonstrative, direct violent action without legal or moral restraints, targeting mainly civilians and non-combatants performed for its propagandistic and psychological effects on various audiences and conflict parties. Second important consensus on which academicians have reached is that terrorism is a tactic is employed in three main contexts. First, illegal state repression. Second, propagandistic agitation by non-state actors in times of peace or outside zones of conflict. And third, as an illicit tactic of irregular warfare employed by state and non-state actors. Third is that the physical violence or threat thereof employed by terrorist actors involve single-phase acts of lethal violence such as bombings and armed assaults, dual-phase life-threatening incidents like kidnapping, hijacking and other forms of 
hostage taking for coercive bargaining as well as multi-phase sequences of actions such as in disappearances involving kidnapping, secret detention, torture and murder. Another important consensus on which academicians have reached is that the publicized terrorist victimization initiates threat-based communication processes whereby on the one hand conditional demands are made to individuals, groups, governments, societies or sections thereof and on the other hand the support of specific constituencies which may be based on ties of ethnicity, religion, political affiliation and the like is sought by the terrorist perpetrators. Fifth, at the origin of terrorism stands terror, instilled fear, dread, panic or mere anxiety spread among those identifying or sharing similarities with the direct victims generated by some of the modalities of the terrorist act. Its shocking brutality, lack of discrimination, dramatic or symbolic quality and disregard of the rules of warfare and the rules of punishment. Sixth is the main direct victims of terrorist attacks are in general not any armed forces but are usually civilians, non-combatants or other innocent and defenseless persons who bear no direct responsibility for the conflict that gave rise to acts of terrorism. Thus, it is basically targeted to instill fear among the general public. Seventh is that the direct victims are not the ultimate targets as in a classical assassination where victim and target coincide but serve as a message that they are just the means, the target is the government. More or less unwittingly helped by the news values of the mass media to reach various audiences and conflict parties that identify either with the victim's plight or the terrorist's professed cause. Sources of terrorist violence can be individual, perpetrators, small groups, diffuse transnational networks as well as state actors or state-sponsored clandestine agents such as death squads and hit teams. Ninth, while showing similarities with the methods employed by the organized crimes as well as those found in war crimes, terrorist violence is predominantly political, usually in its motivation but nearly always in its societal repercussions. Tenth is the immediate intent of acts of terrorism is to terrorize, intimidate, antagonize, disorientate, destabilize, coerce, compel, demoralize or provoke a target population or conflict party in the hope of achieving from the resulting insecurity a favorable power outcome. Example, it can be like obtaining publicity or extorting ransom money or submission to terrorist demands or mobilizing or immobilizing sectors of the public. Eleventh, the motivation engaged in terrorism covers a broad range including redress for alleged grievances, personal or vicarious revenge, collective punishment, revolution, national liberation and the promotion of diverse ideological, political, social, national or religious causes and objectives. Twelfth is that act, uh, acts of terrorism rarely stand alone but form part of a campaign of violence which alone can due to the serial character of acts of violence and threats of more to a come create a pervasive climate of fear that enables the terrorist to manipulate the political process. Now uh, let's have a look at the four waves of terrorism in which they have striking characteristic. First wave is anarchist wave. This anarchist wave, in this the anarchists use political assassination as their asymmetrical weapon of terror. They believed that assassinating government officials, industrialists and heads of state would create chaos which would lead to the end of social institutions and oppression. Thus they had a belief in anarchical methods. Second is the anti-colonial wave and this wave, uh, this is the second wave which gave birth to 
anti colonial organization mainly IRA which is which was very popular during 90s that is Irish Republican Army the anti colonial second wave lasted nearly 40 years and it only receded when the colonial empires dissolved in their pursuit of self determination the anti colonial terrorists attacked the local institutions and representatives of colonial power the third is the new left wing the main trigger event for this wave was the viet congress successful resistance against the french and then the us military in vietnam fourth or the current wave is the religious wave that is the current wave of jihadi terrorism which was triggered by the success of iranian islamic revolution in 1979 where its origin could be traced the successful resistance to the soviet invasion of afghanistan further reinforced that hope and gave birth to the taliban and al qaeda this wave is driven by anti western wahhabi salafi interpretation of islam now to conclude after looking at all these definitions of scholars of government agencies and the revised academic consensus definition compiled by skid the uh, definition of terrorism can be summed up as terrorism is the premeditated use or threat to use violence by individuals or subnational groups in order to obtain a political or social objective through the intimidation of large audience beyond that of the immediate victim two basic essential ingredients which characterize any modern definition of terrorism is one the presence or threat of violence and a political social motive without violence or its threat terrorists cannot make a political decision make a respond to their demands moreover in the absence of a political social motive a violent act is a crime rather an act of terrorism terrorists broaden their audience beyond their immediate victims by making their actions appear to be random so that everyone feels anxiety which is their main aim to create a fear psychosis in the minds of public and to convey it to their ultimate target in contrast to a drive by shooting on a city street terrorists act are not random but well planned and often well executed attacks where the terrorists account for risks and associated costs as well as possible gains so uh, i hope you all have been uh, well acquainted with the origin of the word terrorism what are the problems uh, which uh, which we encounter in defining terrorism the importance of definition of terrorism and the various definitions which have been given by a number of scholars government agencies and even by terrorist so we can sum up that terrorism is basically uh, an intended uh, intended threat or use of violence by individuals or subnational groups mainly targeted against the civilians or non-combatants to create terror in the minds of public thank you